Hey everyone and welcome. We are Next Level Business Advisors and this is Business Stories of Success. If you want to break through and achieve your own business success by learning from other successful business owners, you're in the right channel. For more of our content, make sure you click subscribe and don't forget the bell icon so you're the first to be notified when new videos are added. Enjoy today's video. Hello, hello, hello. You're with Mark Adams at Next Level Business Advisors, and today we have another treat for you. We're bringing on board Miss Lisa Torba. She is with Jay Hilber. I'm screwing it up. Hilberton, right? Jay Hilburn. Jay Hilburn. Hil Jay Hilburn, and she is a fashionista. <laughs> We're going to learn a lot about what she does today and how she found her road to success. She has a great story. We were chatting a little bit earlier. Um, I think was it a couple days ago and I'm fascinated right by the way she's built this empire I think you guys will be too welcome Lisa how are you hi Mark I'm excited thanks for having me oh it's my pleasure I, I love talking to uh, business owners who uh, are phenomenal and when I heard your story I was really really impressed I think people will be like wow and so uh, I wanted you to jump right in and tell us a little bit about yourself who All right. Well, I am Lisa Torba. I am a Jay Hilburn menswear stylist for actually about five years next month. Before that, I was in insurance sales and pharma sales, which is not sexy or fun. And I was good at it, but I wanted to do something that was more passion oriented. And through that, I found image consulting and further down, I found menswear styling, which is what I've been doing for the last five years and truly enjoying it and making my friends, my clients, my clients, my friends. It's been wonderful. That's pretty cool. And you left the corporate world. I guess insurance is the corporate world, right? And you started Absolutely. out on your own, which exactly. is phenomenal. All right. So um, your business, you said you are doing styling for men what does that really entail i haven't asked that question from a lot of people but like i'm a i'm a, I'm a dude well, you're a dude uh, you right? are could you style me i could and i work with men virtually all over the country as well as gentlemen right outside my local area which is right outside philadelphia so what it is, is I bring a personal and unique custom shopping experience to men. Imagine if you were working with a personal stylist who picked out the garments seasonally for you, just for you, provided style tips on how to put it all together, um, really envision a wardrobe of clothing that are built to your measurements. Imagine if you had long arms, uh, a smaller torso, maybe you were really tall or really small. Um, expect your clothes to fit. It, expect your clothes to fit you right when you work with a personal stylist, versus purchasing off the rack, taking it to be tailored, or suffering through your clothing just not really looking right. With me, you get um, value pricing. There's no middleman, and it doesn't require you to go anywhere. I either work with you like we're doing with Zoom with our algorithm. Or I come to your home or office and I measure you. So it doesn't require you to go anywhere. So that my is personal really touch. It. Yeah. That's cool. That's very cool. And you did actually give me some tips the last time we chatted. Green might be my color. No. <laughs> so let me stop being the fool. Let me ask you a question now. You own your business. What I role know. do you play? Now, obviously, you do the styling part, but what other roles do you play in your business? Well, I am an independent contractor for Jay Hilburn. So I'm a 1099 contractor with Jay Hilburn. So they pay me monthly and I am in outreach and outside sales. So as much as I love styling, I am my own, um, I find my own clients. Many of my clients come from introductions and referrals from my current clients who absolutely love what I do and want to share me with their friends and colleagues. So being a stylist is awesome, but when I look for new stylists to join me in Jay Hilbert, I don't necessarily need anybody with a fashion background. I need somebody with entrepreneur, entrepreneurial spirit. I need somebody that's a go-getter, somebody that wakes up excited to work, and somebody who's good with networking. Like you and I, we met brand new on a networking meeting. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. So that means that you are, you, you style the men, but you also teach the, the other stylists. Is that right? I so do. Your, your, your role as owner, you are a trainer. Are you HR? Correct. Okay, awesome. I'm awesome. a little bit of everything. So I am the stylist to my clients. I'm the mentor to my team. We have coaching every once a week with different team members because I want them to be successful. I think success is amazing, but you have to want it. So when I bring yeah. stylists onto my team, I want to make sure that they're coachable and that they're going to want to invest in themselves besides just invest in their business. Nice, nice. You know, that's one of the hard parts with, to me at least, being an owner of a business. And, and that's what you are as well, right? So finding the right fit for the business is not always easy, you know, but it's one of those interesting things because when it's right, oh, it's a beautiful thing. It's and perfect. you have a nice little team with you from what I remember, right? I do. I have seven people currently working with me. One of my team members is a, a retired Marine general. So that's super exciting. He was a client and realized that this was great and he would like to do this. I have stylists that have come from the corporate world. I have stylists that have come from the textile world. So everybody brings their own unique uh, personality to it. When I first started though, I was so excited that people wanted to join my team. But I didn't really vet them properly. I was just so excited. And then I learned that just because you want to be a stylist, that there's a lot of other things that really roll into it. Just because you want to be a business owner doesn't mean you could wake up one day and be one. There's a lot of things you need to learn to do. And that's really the key for successful business owners. We all start with our ability, whatever that might be, whether it's the ability to style or the ability to uh, do financials or what have you. But there's all the other things that makes a business a business. When we're an employee, we focus on the one task. And in your case with your team, they, they have to be able to be versant as well, it seems like, right? Just Absolutely. like you. So they're running their own little businesses in essence. Your team. 100% and then they can build their teams. The beautiful thing about Jay Holborn, what Jay Holborn offers to people is the ability to have your own business and the ability to grow your team individually and move up through um, the ranks of Jay Hilburn and be successful. So many people don't even know that the opportunity for Jay Hilburn is out there. And my goal is to share it with everybody all over the country because we are 1,800 stylists. We've been around for 12 years and we want to grow. Every man deserves a personal stylist. Just because it's custom doesn't mean it's expensive. It means it's made for you. Good, good, good. So now let's talk a little bit about you and how you can be found specifically. Uh, what number, if someone wanted to find you, what do you have a website that they would reach out to you on or phone number? How will we find Lisa Torba? I have both. So my phone number is 717-917-6023. And my website would be www.lisatorba.jhilburn.com. And that's T-O-R-B-A. Very nice. Very nice. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you missed that, pause, rewind about 10 seconds, and you get all those deets. Now, you said that you were in business for almost how long now? Almost five years. It'll be five years mid-February. Congratulations. Yeah. So That's I awesome. made it to the five year point. That's a big deal. Right? They say fifty percent of the businesses fail, I think, in the first five years. I always get the stat wrong, but it's I know it's like fifty percent and it's something about five years failure. So I think you you're got right. past I that and that's are. a big deal. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so now you've been doing it for five years. Does that make you an expert stylist? What makes you an expert stylist? Well, it's super exciting, and I don't know if I shared this with you when we chatted last week, but we just had our national sales meeting, and I am number 10 in the country for sales. So I would think that makes me uh, pretty much of an expert, and I am number five for mentoring. So that means that as much as I love styling, I also love sharing the business. So I, I think I'm pretty much an expert, though there's always something for me to learn. Absolutely. But absolutely. That's pretty I know impressive. You, thank you. I know what makes a gentleman look good, feel good, and having clothes that fit makes a difference. 
Awesome. Awesome. So now the title of this podcast is Stories of Success. I like to ask everybody that I speak to uh, their thought as to what that means. How do you define success? I define success. That's a great question. There's so many different verticals that that can take. But I define Mm -hmm. success where my children are proud of me, that I can make them smile when they talk about their mom and her business. Uh, Being successful means I'm growing a good team and sharing the opportunity with other people so they can feel fulfilled in what they do. And for other people to show their children that just whether you're a mom or a dad, that there's so much more to you than the square box that you're put in. So I was able to send my kids on vacation, uh, help pay for college, you know, help do things for them so then they can see that success and one day share that as well. So it's not necessarily a number of money. Um, Success does help you pay the bills, but there's much more to success than your finances. I agree. And it's interesting because when I started this podcast, uh, we're rolling on about eight, nine months now. I've asked that question of every owner. Not one has said a whole lot of money. Right. <laughs> Success, it seems like when, when I'm chatting with people and let me know what you think, it's, it's all these ancillary things. And if those things work out right, you probably make some money. <laughs> you know, but that's not the goal that drives people to success. What do you think? No, I agree. Um, I believe in the relationship that you develop. I believe in relationship selling. I just don't want to go into a meeting and hand somebody my business card and say, call me. That is not any, that, that's not success at all. And that's not relationship selling. And I believe that when you sell from the heart and you believe in what you do, people will trust you. And then they're going to want to do business with you. So nice. I, I think you are nice. on track. Thank you. So let me ask you this question. I think I know the answer. Do you consider yourself successful? I do consider myself successful. Um, I'd like to be more successful. I'd like to have more people on my team. I'd like to have more clients. I think everybody feels that way when they're in business, or I would like to think a lot of people feel that they are successful. But to continue to be successful, we need to keep doing the outreach. We have to do the same routine, whether it's getting up, doing yoga, having coffee, and then getting to your desk. Taking breaks is great. I'm working from home, but I pretty much have a routine. And I think to be successful, you need a routine. It's great that you you can change it up, but it's nice to have an idea of what that routine is. Okay, very cool. And it's interesting because um, when I talk about success with most people, they all say the same thing, right? It's a journey, not a destination. And so while they're on the journey, most of my, well, if they agree to do the podcast, they feel somewhat successful as they're on their journey, right? Right. And so it's nice. So let me ask you this question, which is what people listen to us for. You feel successful in your business. What do you do? And you mentioned it, but if you can dig, dig a little deeper or give us a little bit more, what do you do to make sure that your success continues to be a reality? What are some things you can help us with? I love that. So for me, it's a lot of self-care. When I was working in corporate, I didn't have any self-care. I ran, I worked for everybody else. I made sure I, I did what I had to do. I came home, I was exhausted. I cooked, I cleaned. I did what I needed for my family, but I was spent. I was so tired. But now as an entrepreneur, I'm realizing just how important self-care is. So I do yoga, I'd like to say every day. So far I'm on day 18 since the new year started. But self-care is really important. Meditating is really important to success. Finding a fabulous mentor or accountability partners, that adds to Mm. your success. Because if I tell you I'm gonna do 10 outreaches today and then I speak with you tomorrow and you're like, how many did you do? And I say five, that's not good. So having that accountability is really important. Um, Have calendar blocking is really important. Reading good books about business is really important. So I try and do a little bit of that every day. Nice, I like it. So you managed to get a lot out of your day, it sounds like. 
Well, my yoga classes are a half hour. I do them in the basement, so I don't have to travel to <laughs> from a gym. But I do them hey, every still, day. But yeah. That's good. That's good. Oh, I got a, uh, some just popped up on my computer talking about LifeLock. Wow. Yeah. That's important. So protect your identity, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Absolutely. Um, I get up at 6 a.m. <laughs> let me ask you this. Yeah. What time? What? Six. Not super early, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not. Uh, I'm nowhere near that. I tell you, six in the morning, something's wrong. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to. I'm trying to work on that seven. I'm trying to do seven, Good but it's you. important. You can... Like you, you mentioned that. You know that that you have this routine, but you have like a set amount of things that you're trying. To, not a set amount, but you have specific things that you do to accomplish success to reach success. Correct. Yeah, I interviewed. Um, a client of mine who is a doctor, very successful doctor, and he also does coaching. And he talked about that routine that he that he take that he does every single day. So that even before he's in the office, he's he says, When I when I turn the handle on my, my door to open the office, I'm already moving. Absolutely. Everybody, you know, my, my mind is already set. It's a pretty phenomenal thing. And there's a commonality that I see with people who are successful. Part of it is exactly what you're doing. You have that routine. You know exactly what you want to accomplish and you accomplish it. And if you do that enough, well, then you're going to have some success. But now let me ask you this question. So we're talking about all your great successes and number five in sales. And, uh, but have you ever made a huge mistake in your business uh, along the way? Oh. I've made many mistakes along the way. And what I share with the new stylists that I bring onto my team or stylists across the country that I speak to is I've made every mistake that anybody could make in Jay Hilburn. I've made them all. I've made them all. I've lost commission. I've lost clients. I've apologized to clients. But you know what they all turn around and tell me? It's clothing. It's not brain surgery. It's okay, we'll fix it. So my clients are also really wonderful. I take a failure that I've done much more personally than my clients. If I do something, if I'm making you a pair of pants and a button up shirt and I make the, those pants shorts on accident, that's my fault. I will remake those pants. Jay Hilburn will pay for that correction but I get dinged, not monetarily, but I get dinged in, in my remake. So for me, everything that I do, I'm really trying to be methodical because I don't want to take those dings. So I share with new people that I bring into the business, follow successful stylists that have come before you. We've made the mistakes. Let's talk about everything before we place that order, before we have that, those first five, 10, 15 appointments, because I can help you through them. Let me mentor you. So I mentor the mentor and I make successful um, stylists because I've made all the mistakes. Nice, nice. So um, you've grown from your mistakes and now you can help others. Let me ask you this. What do you think is the single biggest quality needed to be successful as a business owner? Oh, good question. I think as a business owner, you can't take for granted that your business is going to be there every day. I think you have to nurture it. You have to grow it. You have to water it. It's got to be something that you believe in and work every day. Because if you don't, your clients are going to go to the next best, greatest person that they think is better than you if you do not take care of those relationships. Okay. So then that quality would be Nurturing, or what would you say? Someone, someone to wants to nurture, take this from you. I think you have to nurture your business as a whole, but you Love have it. to keep your business personalized to the individuals you are working with, so they don't nice. feel that you're receiving. They're receiving mass emails. They might from the companies that we represent. But when I email my clients, they're personal. When I text them, they're personal. They want to know that I'm there to help them look good and feel good. So to me, you, you nurture your business as a whole, but you need to keep yourself accountable to your clients so they keep coming back. Nice, nice. I'm going to extract the word accountable again. You mentioned it before, and I thought I like that, right? So accountability is definitely something that we need, and it's how we take care of our clients, how we take care of our business. Our businesses 
are our babies, right? We need, we need to hold ourselves accountable. We're taking care of that baby. I like that. Um, you mentioned that you have had mentors. You actually mentor. So can you give us an example, maybe one or two of how mentors have helped contribute to your business success? Oh, yeah. Um, I have to say, when I was in corporate, I didn't know what calendar blocking was. I didn't understand mm. it. it. It wasn't a term that was used. You just went about your day and you got your doctor visits in or you reached out in the insurance business to your corporate clients. And that was great. It was a nine to five or eight to four. I went in, I did my work and I left. When I opened my own business, it's, it's exciting but hard. I like bright and shiny objects. So if there's something really exciting going on, it's like a squirrel. But if I calendar block and I know that, you know, I'm going to email, uh, I'm going to return emails from 10 to 1130. I'm going to do text outreaches from one to three. I'm going to do style boards every um, Wednesday at four o'clock. If I lay that out, that is the foundation of my business. It keeps me accountable. Some bright and shiny objects get in there, but not as often because I hold myself accountable and my accountability group holds me accountable. I love it. I love it. That's one um, that I had to learn as well. And I was in business for probably 10 years or more before I got my first coach. Um, and you know, you, you hit the ceiling. At least I did. I hit the ceiling in my business and I, there was no way I was ever going to break through it on my own because I had did everything I knew I could do. So I got a coach and one of the things he helped me to understand was that he called it time chunking, right? And it's just, that's exactly what you said. But boy, when I implemented it, what a difference it made in productivity in the business. So that is a nice lesson you got from your mentor that you shared for us. Thank you. I think that's one that if someone is listening, like you said, in corporate America, we might not understand that. Uh, so if someone's listening and they're a business owner, they might go, man, I need to learn a little bit more about that. And there's all kinds of places where you can find that information on how to effectively manage your time. It's one of those things that gets away. So Absolutely. Like and, and it's a little scary. And I am the shiny object Cheryl, squirrel too, just so you know. I'm like this. <laughs> I think that's what makes us successful. <laughs> yes, yeah. absolutely. We're also good on the fly if we need to be. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Um, let me ask you this. If you could go right back in time, like, wow, amazing. I can go back in time. Five years ago, right before I started my business, what would be the one piece of advice I'd give myself? What would that be? Hmm. Listen, listen, listen. Don't think you know everything. It's really interesting. I had been watching people own their businesses for years. My father had his own very successful business. I worked for other successful businesses. I've seen other entrepreneurs be successful. When I started, I'm like, I got this. I've been watching. I knew I can do this. Wow. Talk about failures. So, you know, mistakes were made. So it's really important to listen to those who have come before you, ask questions, keep a notebook, refer back to things. Don't be a know-it-all. I'm not saying I was a know-it-all at all, but I thought I knew a lot to, keep, to get myself going. And no matter what business you're in, whether it's insurance or menswear styling, there's a lot to learn. So we need to listen and we need to be coachable. Yeah. I love it. You know, all the great so. ones, the great ones are coachable in Absolutely. business, in sports, right? Yeah. It, you, you have to be coachable. And so mm -hmm. I like that. And that's a, a really good piece of advice for business owners who start out. So many of us think we, yeah, I got it. You know, like you said, my dad had a small business in the city and I was like, Oh, I, you know, I even helped daddy do the books, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so I know how to do that. And then you get on your own and it's like, Oh, there's all these little things that you don't realize until you're thrust in the fray, right? So there's listening. nuances that we yeah. just don't know. Yeah. That's it. That's it. They say the devil's in the details and we don't know the details. Absolutely. And since I am here with bright and shiny and a helicopter view, details are the hardest thing for me. So I really have to pay attention to those details with every appointment, with every gentleman, with my books, with my, you know, 
my accounting. So the details are really important. And in the beginning, five years ago, I didn't have details. I just did. Gosh, man, it's okay. And the next thing you know, oh, I needed to know that. Absolutely. That's a piece of advice that everybody needs to pay attention to. For me, it's slow down to take to pay attention to the details. I'm always moving a mile a minute, you know, and if, so you don't spend time. Sometimes we have to slow down and pay attention to those oh, yeah. details. Take some deep more, yoga right? breaths during the day. Deep breaths in yeah. and out, slow and steady. <laughs> All right, I have one more question. This is what I call my bonus question. Are you ready? This one is not actually in the list that I even shared with you. Every <gasps> oh. week we have a mastermind session with a bunch of business owners and we just vibe on a topic. So I throw the topic at people and just try to get their thoughts. I think you're going to knock this one out the park. You ready? I'm ready. The quote that we shared was this. Wonder what your customer really wants? Ask, don't tell. Oh, absolutely. Never tell. Never start a sentence with you should. Always ask questions. Because if you don't ask, you don't know. And you can't assume just because you think, or just because I think I'm going to come talk to you and you need a button down shirt and a pair of trousers. Maybe we're not talking about suits and shirts. Maybe we're talking that you want a custom t shirt and a pair of shorts. But if I don't ask and I just start off with what I think you need, I'm going to miss, I'm going to totally miss it. And I probably lost a client somewhere. So always ask. I love it. Love it. I like what you said. Never start a sentence with you should. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's very cool. I like it. So in Lisa, personal, thank you so much for your time. Oh, I said in Say personal that? and in business. Oh yeah. I'm going to, Go home today and tell my wife, you know what? You should be. <laughs> I'll see how that works Call out. This tomorrow. might be my last broadcast. <laughs> Call me tomorrow. Let me know how that goes over. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll call you. I just won't put the camera on because I don't want you to see the blackout. No. <laughs> she might just knock me out, right? So, but that's a good piece of advice, right? And sometimes, especially like business advisors, we're always telling people, well, you should. No, it's not what you should. It's like, what do you think if we? That might be a good right. thought, right? That's but a good one. It's about listening. It is 100%. Absolutely. Yeah. I love it. Well, I really want to thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. This was a great conversation. And um, what I hope is that we can check in from time to time and see your journey to success continue. I would love that. That would be wonderful. And thank you so much for having me. It's been a lot of fun. Awesome. Thank you.